Man, it's been a while since we last heard about Judas, hasn't it? Well, Ghost Story Games finally released a second trailer that we can look into. And I think the story is starting to become clear. Let's get right to it. As of this recording, there are a couple of things 100% confirmed. We now know what the ship looks like, as well as its name called the Mayflower. According to Ghost Story Games' X account, this gargantuan spacecraft is a city where machines control every aspect of business, art, and government. When I first read this, it made me laugh, because it's a subtle way of saying that almost everything about a person's life aboard the ship is influenced by those who make the rules. In the first analysis video, I pointed out some of the posters which tell people love is toxic, and that they should be content with what they're given. There's even another one where they basically made long hugs a social taboo. Everything is in accordance with what's known as the Mayflower Law, first seen on the computer terminal. And I think the way it's enforced is with the help of characters called the Big Three, as printed on this one shirt. First, we have a sheriff-looking guy who we already identified in the first video as Rosenberg. Next is this woman in a black and gold dress, whose name could possibly be Alfie, as seen here in one of the small monitors. I'm just not sure if there are some letters missing. As for this pink-haired woman, unfortunately not much information is known about her right now, apart from her possible role, along with the other two. The way they are portrayed in this shot leads me to assume that these three are basically celebrities, that influence everyone aboard the ship on how to live their lives. The question is, why do people listen to what they say? The answer could be quite simple as the trio being charismatic, but I also suspect the fact that there's a social credit system in place has something to do with it. We know from the first trailer that these characters are not organic beings. They're virtual projections that control some functionalities on the ship. Rosenberg, for example, commands the deputies, those bipedal horses armed with a shotgun, while the pink-haired lady can control turrets built into the facilities. So the big three is tied to the Mayflower's computer system, and it's safe to assume that listening to them is one of the rules, in exchange for the seemingly comfortable life they have. If we look at their pictures, they don't seem to be ragged or miserable. If any of them starts breaking the rules, then their social credit could go down. When that happens, it will most likely affect their purchasing ability because the currency within the ship is digital, with each individual's hand device acting as their wallet, shown here. And if there are indeed recording machines everywhere, then no one's safe from being penalized. What if I told you that every word you say is being recorded? Apart from the compulsory participation in listening to the Big Three, Another way people aboard the ship are being manipulated is through suggestive posters, similar to the ones I mentioned earlier. There's also a movie screening in one of the screenshots found on the official website, which is most likely being used as a vehicle for their ideals. On top of that, there are various statement merchandise with messages like Love the Mission, Follow Orders, and Eat the Cookie. This is the meaning behind the protagonist's lines when she said, Every thought you've ever had, your love, your fear, your hate, were just planted in your brain like weeds in a garden. So what happens if someone becomes a violator, the official term for those who break the rules? In addition to their social credit possibly taking a hit, shaming offenders seems to be a highly encouraged practice. In one of the statement merchandise, it says, I shamed Doubter. There's also one for a character named Barbara, who's being shamed for being a, well, this. But the most interesting ones are the merch designed for the so-called Judas, and we have visual confirmation of who this person is. In one of the shots in trailer 2, we see the protagonist get spray painted with the letter J, and now we know why there's a dark stain on her chest in trailer 1 and in the computer terminal shot. 
I've read the code that was being written on the left side, and it's basically for reprogramming Rosenberg. In one particular line, it says, Rosenberg at Cassandra. This is probably her name. It also clues us in to her possible role on the ship, which is one of the computer engineers, or maybe even the creator of the big three. We also have a poster of her atop one of the merch stands, where she's hanging onto a steel rod surrounded by downvote emojis, which explains this shot. From everything you've seen so far, we can get a somewhat clear picture of what's going on aboard the Mayflower. This is a community where laws are laid out with the help of influential personalities and are reinforced through indirect means, a setup in which members are compelled to always follow the established rules, regardless of its nature, or else they'll be shamed by others who are keeping in line, an environment designed to trigger groupthink where conformity is put above everything else, just like in a cult. In worst case scenarios, such setups can be very hazardous to dissidents, like what the protagonist experienced. In this shot, where a violator gets placed within a glass tank, I suspect these two characters are related. They look very much alike. If that's the case, then this is quite grim, but also a very realistic scenario. My hypothesis is that the Mayflower is a long-term project in conditioning people to follow orders without question in preparation for the mission. I think this is a major plot point, so we probably won't find out the details until the game releases. But what we do know is that the city is not stationary on some planet. It's within a giant spacecraft that's heading somewhere. Hence why the people within are called pilgrims. If we go back to trailer 1 and examine some of the lyrics in Leave Her Johnny, which says, I was sailing to that distant shore, as the Mayflower races to the ocean floor. Leave her Johnny, leave her, for the Mayflower's done. Which means whatever's in store for them, it's probably not good. This also explains why Cassandra said, You are the frog in a pot, boiling so slowly. You don't even know what's happening. Of course, there are some questions left unanswered. We still don't know who Baby C is and why there's a movie made about them, apart from needing protection. Although I suspect they're the figurehead for the organizing body within the ship, which means the mission, whatever it is, will be done in Baby C's name, and this could be their logo. Is this bearded person wearing a jacket the same as this statue, balancing a planet on his hands? That would make him a VIP. Up until now, we still don't know the identity of this character who has her hand device implanted on her right side, instead of the usual left. Why are we seeing flashes of Cassandra from 1977 to 1979? Is her past version trying to help the one in the present? It's hard to say right now, but just like before, I'll make sure to update you once new details emerge.